Darkness is one of the most fun games I've played from this year. Now I'm not going to stand here and pretend that this game is unique or innovative, because it's not. It's a 2D Metroidvania that takes inspiration from the 8-bit era. This has been done before, in fact it's been done so many times, anything with the words Retro Revival are received with a negative connotation before they're even really played. But is Castle in the Darkness one of those games? Well, I mean, how could it be? The combat is satisfying. The Knight Sword can be swung as fast as the attack button can be pressed. There are many different weapons that can be used, and they are even mechanically diverse. Among additional attacks, magic spells can be used, which are charged up for greater impact, and the sound effects make hurting enemies feel good. Speaking of, there are a lot of varieties in the enemy design that will end up being very interesting. Even the bosses look really cool, not to mention fun to fight, with each one requiring a different tactic and taking place in a totally different setting. The boss fights feel unique. Some of them are difficult to beat on the first try, but once a pattern is figured out, or an effective strategy is discovered, battles feel rewarding when triumphed over. The boss fights end up being the highlight of the game, which is really good, since there are a lot of bosses to battle. Heck, aside from encountering a cool boss, it's worthwhile to defeat all the big enemies that are encountered, since, in true Zelda fashion, the player is rewarded with health upgrades allowing for even more exploration of the world. There are secret paths that can be found too. Some just end up leading to a chest full of coins, but others uncover new areas. And some... well, are a little... <sighs> Not that you aren't given options on where you want to go. Most of the game is actually pretty linear, but once the bearings are set, the areas begin to branch off and require all paths to be discovered for finding all the upgrades, equipment, and ultimately progress in the game. This is what makes Castle in the Darkness a fun game, and it got me hooked almost immediately by doing so. I wanted to play this game for the bosses, for the cool weapons, for the exploration. But as I did, I began to notice something oddly peculiar about this game. Castle in the Darkness is very flawed. One of the staple features of Metroidvanias are the mapping system that tell the player where he or she is in relation to key areas. Castle in the Darkness doesn't have a map system, and it sucks. It's true that this game is a bit more linear than the likes of Super Metroid or Or in the Blind Forest, but that doesn't excuse this game when it still encourages backtracking. Exploring areas is fun, but it feels hindered without being 100% sure of knowing where the knight is. This game is also very difficult, and in my opinion, to a fault. The difficulty is comparable to that of Dark Souls. Trying to be a speedrunner is an easy way to get killed. There are plenty of tricks and traps that will surprise a new player. Enemy patterns and level design cause notable difficulty spikes, and this game has an invulnerability period so brief, I ended up liking Star Tropics 2 Zelda's Revenge a little bit more. This mindset of difficulty is that of trial and error, which I do not find works in action platformers. It's obvious that the difficulty of this game derives only from the intention of being NES hard, because that's just how games were back then, without asking what made those games difficult in the first place. Add controls that are responsive, but not necessarily tight, and it makes Castle in the Darkness feel too unforgiving for its own good. An ever-increasing death counter only manages to put salt on the wound. But perhaps this game's biggest flaw is there not being a pause menu. Throughout the game, it's possible to obtain a variety of different weapons and magic spells, but equipment can only be swapped at a save point. If the player obtains and equips a weapon that does not feel satisfying to use, he or she is stuck with it until the next save point is found. Imagine playing Cave Story, but only being able to switch out weapons at save points. Spoiler alert, that's not fun! It's a problem that discourages experimentation, since different magic spells and weapons can't be switched out freely. This would have made the game easier, but in a game that's difficulty relies on tricking the player and having series of rooms that feel like endurance runs, it feels unfair not to have a conventional inventory system. The problems that this game have noticeably add up, and it decreases the overall value of the game. About two or three hours in the game, depending on how much you enjoy it, Castle in the Darkness becomes to feel tiring, and even a little boring. Even if one of the issues I mentioned before were addressed in some way, it could have made the experience significantly better. But why did it have to be this way? What were the cause of Castle in the Darkness's problems? I don't know that for sure, but I did notice something about all the references that this game made. You can find a whole bunch of different video game and movie references littered throughout Castle in the Darkness. With such an abundance of video game and movie references, you have to wonder, was Matt Cat more focused on making a game that called back to the NES more than he was a good game? Look at a game like Shovel Knight for a second. 
People have often praised this game for masterfully referencing the likes of Mega Man, DuckTales, Castlevania, and Zelda 2. There are so many similarities between the five games, but there are very little, if any, direct references to the originals within Shovel Knight. People are reminded of the days of 8-bit platforming, not because it blatantly points it out, but because the gameplay mechanics remind those who play it of the fun NES games that came before. If I'm going to remember Castle in the Darkness for anything, it will be remembered for the fact that it tried too hard for the wrong reasons. Although it was a game that still ended up being fun, it feels like the main focus was to be an NES game above being fun. In preparation for making this episode, I looked up reviews for Castle in the Darkness. Most of them are positive, which is fine. This is a fun game. But I can't sit back and praise this game for what it does good, when many things I notice are the problems. Castle in the Darkness is a game that's made worse by the fact that it's almost good. This is a foundation to a really good game, but it's missing potential. Matt Cap, if you ever make a sequel to this game, Please learn from the missteps that this game made.